College graduate Jaime Reyes is chosen by an ancient biotech scarab to be its symbiotic host, granting Reyes a suit of armor with extraordinary power known as the Blue Beetle. I forgot how bad it looks. The DC Extended Universe has seen its share of ups and downs. Well, mostly downs. Launched on June 14th, 2013 with Zack Snyder's take on the Man of Steel, Warner Bros. and DC seem to always be chasing the success of the MCU without ever really reaching those same heights. To put it in perspective, their last six theatrically released films pulled in a cumulative domestic total of $520.7 million, roughly $56 million less than Avengers Endgame made in just nine days. Their brand has basically become a parody unto itself, with Warner Bros. even allowing their recent smash hit Barbie to slide in a joke about the Snyder Cut. The problem with the DC slate of films is that it's still massively confusing. According to new head honchos James Gunn and Peter Safran, Blue Beetle represents the first official character in their new DCU line of films, which apparently is completely separate from the DCEU line of films that just saw The Flash massively underperform. Yet in December, they will release the DCEU film Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, so they're doing a soft launch of the new DC slate while also closing out the previous slate before doing a full-on reboot with the July 11, 2005 release date of the James Gunn-directed Superman Legacy. As Austin Powers might say, Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. So, forgetting all of that confusion, the real question is, is Blue Beetle any good? Sadly, the answer to that question is no. Blue Beetle continues the downward spiral of most live-action comic book movies that have graced our screens over the past few years. This isn't to say that the movie is necessarily bad, it's just that it is absolutely nothing new. Every single thing in this movie has been done before and done better. Had this been the first superhero movie that we'd ever seen, it would have been a serviceable intro to a character not many are familiar with. The thing is, we're in the year 2023, and after 32 MCU movies and 12 DCEU movies, we've seen nearly every possible scenario for how some random person can get superpowers. So any new movie that dares to take on an origin story needs to find a fresh way of telling that story. Think about the way Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse introduced us to Miles Morales in a new and interesting way, or the way Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix crafted an entirely original take of one of the greatest villains ever committed to screen, Joker. I wish I had a checklist while watching this movie for scenes that have been done in other comic book films. Billionaire bad guy that the public seems to love? Check. Hero clumsy flying around the city for the first time with new superpowered suit? Check. Cyborg henchman? Check. Humor that misses the mark and feels a little forced? Check. The crazy character who says outlandish things yet somehow is a computer genius? check, as well as a few other checks that I won't give away here as not to spoil anything. The problem with a film like this is that Warner Brothers is asking audiences to spend their hard-earned cash on stories that they've already paid to see. We paid to see a man get spider capabilities after being bitten. We paid to see a billionaire make an Iron Man suit with infinite capabilities. We paid to see a man capable of turning himself into the size of an ant. We paid to see a boy receive ancient mystical powers already when we paid for Shazam. So why should we pay to see basically the same stories, only this time in a beetle suit? It isn't all bad though. In an age where every movie feels like it's part of something larger, Blue Beetle gave me that feeling I had before the idea of interconnected universes even came out. It felt like a standalone film, and sure there was a quick reference to Superman and The Flash, but when the film was over, I felt like I had watched a complete movie. Even the mid credit scene only set up further Blue Beetle adventures, and not some other franchise that I'm gonna have to keep up with. Blue Beetle was originally going to be a direct-to-streaming movie until David Zaslav came in and championed a theatrical release. I am all for that switch because even though the story felt familiar, it is a movie that is benefited from the big screen experience. Superhero movies are meant to feel grand, and the Blue Beetle is no exception. I know James Gunn has said that the Blue Beetle is the first character in the new DC universe, but I think it may be better to allow this character to operate on his own. Allow Blue Beetle to exist in some sort of purgatory between the old DCEU and the new DC universe. 
Now that you have the origin story out of the way, there are a million new and fresh places to take this character. Of course, the same could have been said about Shazam, and we all saw how that sequel turned out. 